That's right, we have a brand new version of Elementor. It's Elementor 2.8. It's in beta, it comes out in about a week or two, but we already have access to it. We know the big new features that are coming, but it's mostly an update that's gonna bring refinement. Now this is the Elementor, not Elementor Pro. So whether you have the paid pro version of Elementor or not, yeah, everybody's going to get this access to this update. If you don't have the pro version, there's a link down to that in the video description box down below. Hey, let's just go ahead and jump on into it. So uh, first, let me go over my favorite change. If you use the social icons module, now when you drag that sucker in there, something's missing here and you might not catch it. They finally got with the program and got rid of Google+. Plus. You have to be probably an older guy to know about Google Plus, it's Google's failed social network. Uh, so they finally got rid of it and now they replace it with YouTube as a default icon. Uh, actually, I think they kind of got this mixed up. They should move YouTube to the top like that because I think um, that's just the order that I see things. So anyways, I'm just joking here. Let's seriously get into it. But that is actually an update, a part of this update. So let's first hit one of the easy ones. Every time you use a module, an Elementor that might want to look different on a mobile device. Well, there's been some mobile refinements. So here I am, I just dragged the headline in and I'm gonna go ahead and show you right here where it says alignment. You see, you now have the responsive option right there before it was these three little dots that would be above. You'll see this a lot here in the advanced as well, uh, the mobile settings for it. So I can go ahead and I can go like this. And now when I click on it, I see an icon and it's this vertical list of devices and when you read why they're doing this it's so that in a future update they can allow you to have custom breakpoints and what a breakpoint is is depending on the size of the display that someone's on your website as it hits certain widths that's called a breakpoint then the elements on your page start to shift a little bit and you can have it go to different sizes. So in this case for a mobile device, if I wanted it to be um, different on a mobile device, I can make that change right here. So this leads us to a future of custom breakpoints. Developers are absolutely going to love this. Now you might not have known this, but for every module that you add or even section to Elementor, you can show or hide it based upon the device someone's on. So you would go into the advanced settings. So I'm in a heading here, and then we have responsive down there. And here's our options where we can toggle to show this on desktop, tablet, or mobile. So what used to happen is when you would toggle this off on a particular device, then when you were previewing it in that mode, you wouldn't be able to see it. But now what happens is if you have it toggled off on a certain device, you would see it's now grayed out. So if I wanted to say, not show this on a mobile device, I'm on a desktop, you don't see it. But if I change it to mobile view like this, you're gonna see it's got this grayed out. This is gonna give you a better idea and control, visual control over your designs when you're tweaking it to make them look good on a mobile device. So those are some of the improvements and what's to come when we're looking at responsive editing. The breakpoints are gonna be awesome for developers. Next is a refinement that I just thought, man, they must be reading my mind. It has to do with colors. So I was putting together this page on my website for Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals. And so I thought, why don't I get some of these Christmas colors? I want that Christmas red and that Christmas green. And I was going to go and grab those colors, but I wanted to use them in multiple places. And I thought, man, I, I, I wish I could just save this color as I'm going about the editing experience. And guess what? This new version of Elementor is going to have fully brand new color picker where you can save colors on the fly. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So wherever you can set a color in Elementor, such as right here, the heading, right here I'm in style and you can see it's the text color. If I click here, you'll notice this looks totally different. So let me show you how this works, it's so easy. Uh, so you would go ahead and you can choose your color as you normally would with the dot right here. And you can also choose the transparency of it like that and that's an option you could paste in the hex code here which we were able to do before but now you can also paste in an rgb value 
I never do that. I could care less about that. But this is what I do care about. I can hit this little plus button and bam. Did you see what happened? Now that red is saved there. Let me show you that again. Let's go ahead and try to find some kind of a green. That looks kind of green. Uh, I'll go ahead and hit the plus and guess what? Bam. There's that green just like that. Now here's the best part. I can go here and I can use a totally different module. So I want to go ahead and use this and I'm like, eh, I want that same green. I'll go ahead and click on it. Click on style and then here for the background color guess what there is that color that I saved on the fly and I can just click on it and there it is and guess what after Christmas I don't need to have these reds and greens uh, lying around what you could do is click and hold and all of a sudden you have a trash can up here you let go and you got rid of it it didn't get rid of it on the button where I've used it it just got rid of it in this saved area here tell me that is not awesome and uh, you can even get rid of these default ones here so if I don't like this blue and I've never been fond of that elementor if you're watching this let's just go ahead and get rid of that there so you can add saved colors and remove saved colors on the the fly in this new version of Elementor. Now the next thing is so cool. There is a new preference setting inside the Elementor editor and they have two settings there. One's old, you might have seen it before. They got a brand new setting in there. Let's go ahead and go there. So we're going to click on the hamburger icon here on the top left and you see it right there, preferences. And when we click on this, we have our new settings. And guess what? The main one is going to be right here where it says UI theme. What this is going to bring is dark mode finally to Elementor. Now, what is so trick about this is if you're using, say, a Mac and your Mac now has a dark mode option, it will automatically enable dark mode for you on Elementor if you have this set to auto detect but you can just have it always be on dark mode by choosing dark and now you have this sleek beautiful dark mode in Elementor I love it I'm one of those people that puts everything in dark mode my iPhones in dark mode my Mac is in dark mode I put the cars uh, display for the navigation in dark mode everything goes in dark mode when I go to KFC to order my chicken I always get the dark meat it's just I, I just like this so uh, anyways uh, that's in the preference but we also have something here um, is your they moved the love not the love the editing handles in here so uh, you have to be an old school Elementor user to remember what the editing handles are so we can turn the editing handles on it's just going to add an additional option here so you can see there's now this duplicate option and then it also adds two other editing handles uh, so if you hover over the column setting it reveals duplicate plus and remove they got rid of this uh, probably like a year ago and people were saying I want my editing handles back uh, but they went ahead and made it an option like this and also on your module you can hover over that blue icon and get some additional options I've learned to live without editing handles because I prefer the right click myself and there it is in beautiful dark mode I'll put that back to auto detect if I was recording this on my Mac which is in dark mode it would have gone in there automatically but what would have the fun been in that okay the last update um, you might some people might view it as they don't like it uh, I actually don't think it's a big deal I actually think it's good because it's gonna lead to exciting things in the future so if you had a pro version of Elementor you already had to when you added the Elementor Pro connect it to your Elementor account in order to access the pro templates but now in the free version they're gonna prompt you if you want to access the free templates to create a free Elementor account so if I was to go right here and I wanted to say add this free template right here and I click on insert it's going to give me this prompt right here to create a free account in order to get these templates all I'd have to do is connect and create a free account now I'm not a conspiracy theorist I don't think Elementor is trying to be big brother by having uh, us connect even the free users and the free um, sites using Elementor to Elementor in order to get access to these templates but uh, I do think it's a good thing it might just be an extra step for everybody now when you read the release notes about why they chose to do this uh, right here let me scroll down to it 
uh, it's all it's right here they're basically alluding to bigger and better things coming in the future by being able to allow someone to have their library connected to an elementor account now could be wishful thinking i would hope that this would mean maybe pro users in the future could save templates to their own cloud which could be connected to all of their elementor sites I don't know if that's it. I don't have any information. I would just hope that they would add a convenience and just like that. And this would be leading up to that. But who knows? Um, that's just a theory. Uh, who knows what that actually is going to end up meaning. Uh, but I do think they'll be able to collect some stats to understand what templates people like, what templates people are using, and give you the option of saving and better organizing a vast library of templates across all of your sites through some form of a sync function. Uh, all right, here we are on the uh, list of improvements, and there is just a long list of tweaks and improvements. So they're really listening to users and what they're saying they want uh, improvement-wise, and they're delivering on it. There's some really neat stuff in here uh, regarding playing videos on autoplay so when someone visits the page on autoplay it will play but on mobile devices that's a new option that is in safari so for all iphones uh, users so there's new options for that there's talk about the preferences there's just a long list of improvements that are listed right here that are in this new version hey give this video a thumbs up before you leave thumbs it up leave me a comment share this video out if you like helpful videos like this and don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell hey what do you think about this update what do you think about the connecting uh if you have a free account connecting that in what do you think about the color picker and all of these refinements and then really listening to make improvements and add just a few useful features like this let me know what you think in the comments down below thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video